Hello, ladies. Good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you are at. And welcome to Home Life with Mrs. B. I am Mrs. B here to share with you my passion for homemaking and his holiness. Amen. You guys, here we are again, week after week. I do want to say that I appreciate those that have been here from the start and you've been going with this study Week by week, hopefully, you are able to get something out of this. I hope that, you know, the Lord has put something on your heart in regards to your identity and who you are as a Proverbs 31 woman. I hope that none of these words that um, that are being taught and talked about over these last few weeks don't fall on deaf ears. I just pray and hope that you've enjoyed this study as much as I have and that you want to continue right along uh, into these next few verses that we have because we are more than halfway along through these scriptures. Amen. So today, today we are going over one of my favorite verses out of all of the verses. Like all of them are powerful and amazing by themselves. I love this Proverbs 31, um, these Proverbs 31 scriptures, 1 through 31. Um, but this one today, Proverbs 31, 19, is definitely one that is tr true and dear to my heart. So before we get started, let's go ahead and open up in prayer as we always do and give thanks to the one and only. Amen. So Heavenly Father, our God, Almighty Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for being who you are, Father God. We just thank you and we magnify your glorious name today and every single day, Father God, because you are good, Lord. Your word never falters, Father God. Your love never is shaken, Lord. You love us unconditionally, Father God. You are our provider. You are our protector and we are so thankful that you bestow your love and grace and mercy on us, Lord God. Today, Father God, we are diving into your word again, your living word, Father God. And I just pray that you just open up our ears, Father, open up our hearts, Father, open up our minds, Father, to your word and whatever it is that you have for us today in this study. We thank you, Father God, that we can just revel and live and just go all out in your word. Lord, we love you. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen, you guys. So let's move on. Because I love, love this scripture. We know that, of course, I love to give recaps. So here we are. We're moving on. We've then opened up and we've talked about how this scripture, Proverbs 31 woman, is insight and information from a mother to a son on how to look for a noble wife. We have talked about being noble women of great noble character, right? We've talked about how we are invaluable. I love that. We are worth more than rubies. We've talked about being trustworthy, right? Oh man, and we've talked about how we are noble women before we can be noble wives. Love it. So a few weeks ago, we've talked about being women of strength. And last week, we talked about being women who don't give up, women who don't let their lamp go out at night. But today, today we are talking about homemaking, being women who are who manage our homes. Amen. So if you can open up your Bibles, we're moving along in this Proverbs 31. Today we're in Proverbs 31 19, where scripture says, Ooh, in her hand she holds a distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. All right, so you know, I like to look up words. I looked up the definition for distaff, and distaff means two things, okay? One, a, it is a staff for holding flax and holding wool and spinning, all right? And we talked about flax and wool a couple of scriptures back, right? We talked about how she was a woman who, you know, purchased flax and wool, and she was careful about the material that she was uh, 
uh, purchasing and how the wool was used to keep them warm during the winter times and how the flax was used for medicine and for lint to make linen clothes for the summertime, right? So the second part of this definition is that this step is a woman's work or her domain. So the disc stuff we see from the definition holds the fibers together, all right? And like a disc staff, as keepers of our home, you and I are what keeps our homes together, right? First, of course, God is always first in the, the uh, runnings of our home, but then it's up to us as the heart of the home to be diligent about how we run our home, amen? So I love the Message Bible translation where scripture in Proverbs 31, 19 says that she is skillful in the craft of home and hearth, right? Diligent in homemaking. Ah, I love that verse because we all know I love everything about homemaking. Um, it's definitely my passion uh, to, to be a homemaker. So we see here in this scripture that there is a reoccurring theme here, all right? The character trait throughout Proverbs 31 thus far that we continue to see often and come up is that we see that this woman, okay, this woman, you and I are diligent, diligent women, right? We read that she works diligently with her hands and she goes far to provide good foods for her family. We've read about how she rises up early, right? To be with God, then tend to her family. We talked about how she works vigorously with her hands and with strength to get things done. So with all of the character traits that she possesses, right? She has been diligent through them all. Amen. So homemaker, when I looked up the uh, definition of homemaker, homemaking is a person or a homemaker is a person who manages the home. So let me tell you this. So the homemaker manages her home, right? By figuring out what, what, which elements in her household needs to be brought together and how in order for the atmosphere to arise in which the family members, according to their own individual natures, can be themselves, a space where they can be themselves. So we are creating this space for them, amen? There's no right or wrong in how to do that, but the homemaker is diligent in finding what suits her family, whether it be the meals that she cooks for them, whether it be how she keeps up with their home and keeps cleaning, whether it be the counselor, because we all know moms are also counselors within the home, and you're tending to each and every personality in a different way, right? Homemaking is taking care of the ones you love and making your house a home. That's simply it. Whether you work inside the home as a full-time homemaker or whether you work outside the home, you as well are a homemaker, okay? And I commend those who do work outside the home because technically it's like you have two jobs, right? You got to go to work and work a nine to five. Some of y'all have to sit in traffic. Some of y'all got to deal with other folks and customers and whatever the case may be, bosses or whatnot. And then you still got to come home to your second shift and you still got to be your the homemaker that you are you still have to take care of your children amen and so with that being said homemaking is not just about cooking and cleaning and organizing your home although that is a part of it let's go ahead and i want to dive in to what homemaking is about, okay? So homemaking, one, is about building your home up. So according to Proverbs 14, one, we know the scripture says that a wise woman builds up her home, right? But the foolish pulls it down with her hands, right? So we've talked about being wise women and we've talked about being women 
of wisdom back in Proverbs 31, 16, right? But we know that with the power of our hands, we can give love and how we create meals for our family, right? And through the power of our hands, those same hands that create those meals can also give amazing and loving hugs to someone that we love, right? We also know that there is power in our tongues and we can use the power of our tongues to either build up a home, amen, or tear it down, right? So we as Proverbs 31 women, you and I, we are responsible for building up our homes and create a safe and loving environment atmosphere, okay, in our home that is overflowing with God's presence. That's just simply it, okay? So the second thing that comes about when um, we're homemaking is about, it's about watching over your home, okay? Proverbs 31, 27, which we will get into later, tells us that she, as this Proverbs 31 woman, she watches over the ways of her household and doesn't eat the bread of idleness, right? Now, we're not talking about idleness as in like she doesn't get rest because we all know that rest and idleness are two different things. Rest is about recovering from doing work that is needed to be done, while idleness equates to just straight up laziness, okay? So 1 Corinthians 16, 13 tells us to be watchful, to be alert, right? Um, scripture tells us to stand tall or stand firm in the faith and be strong. Okay, let me say that again. So 1 Corinthians 16, 13 tells us to be watchful, stand firm in the faith and be strong. So you see, we are the overseers of our home. Okay, we oversee everything, right? From the top to the bottom, we are the watchers in our home. We are to be sober-minded, right? Be alert and be watchful of the prowls of the enemy, which is uh, according to 1 Peter 5, 8, right? Why? Well, y'all, we know what the, what the enemy comes to do when he's prowling through, trying to figure out how to kill, steal, and destroy anything that is of God, family, marriage, right? Love, okay? Our parenting, okay? Woo. We have to be watchful, watchful of his tactics so that we can be ready to fight with power, to fight with authority, and to fight from a place of victory when it comes to our family. Amen. So going back to what homemaking is about, it is about managing your home, all right? So 1 Timothy 5, 13, 14, where Paul tells us what not to do in managing our homes, because we know about cooking, we know about cleaning, we know about bringing about the presence of the Lord in our homes, we know about um, seeking joy and peace through our, throughout our homes. Amen. Praying, you know, over each and every member, Lord God, thank you for them and praying over their lives and, and protection for when they walk out the door. We do and know of all those things, but how about what, um, in managing our home and homemaking, what we shouldn't be doing is probably something that we should know as well. So in scripture, like I said, in 1 Timothy 5, 13 through 14, it says, whew, Paul said that besides they get into the habit of being idle and going about from house to house, and not only do they become idlers, um, but also busybodies who talk nonsense, saying things they ought not to. Verse 14 says, so I counsel young widows to marry, to have children, to manage their homes, and to give the enemy no opportunity for slander. So we see right there that Paul tells us that women should have a home to manage, right? 
because he says so at the end of verse 14. Then he also gives us insight on what not to do in regards to managing and keeping up with our homes. He advised us against idleness, right? He advised us against laziness and against a gossip. Because if you're thinking about it, if you're idle and you're sitting around doing nothing, then all of a sudden you you may get bored. You want something to do. And all of a sudden you get a little lazy. And then you might want to call somebody up to start spreading some gossip. I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. These are the things that are opposite of what we are supposed to be doing in regards to managing and being a homemaker and, you know, being in our home. Um, by doing so, by protecting our home and managing it and managing and having self-control with our tongue, right? We don't give way to the enemy within our homes, within our lives, right? Self-control is key here. So if you uh, do any of these things that I listed above, right? If you're building up your home, whoo, if you are watching over your home, if you are managing and being the keeper of your home, then you, my dear are a homemaker. Again, whether you work in or out the home, you are a homemaker. Whether you are married or single, if you are taking care of your home, you are a homemaker. Don't get it twisted. We are all managers of our home, of our abode. Amen? Wow. So check this out though. It doesn't end just in your home because we know that we are disciples and we are supposed to go forth and make disciples, right? What we do in our home is amazing, but it doesn't end there. We are also supposed to take God's presence and his love and the safe and the, the things that we've talked about that we try to cultivate in our home. We're supposed to bring that out into the world as well. Share God's love with everybody, right? You as a Proverbs 31 woman, as a wife, as a mom, as a homemaker, okay, you not only have the opportunity to minister to in your home and to your own family, but you also have an opportunity to minister to others as well. So if you go over to Titus chapter 2 verses 4 through 5, scripture tells us, and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their husbands, that the word of God not be reviled, right? So Titus 2, 4 through 5, provides us with the standard in which the Lord wants us as homemakers to live by, right? He has instructed us to love our husbands, love our children, all right? Have self-control, which we all know is the fruit of the spirit. And so be pure, right? Work at home, meaning homemaking, not talking about getting a job at home, but your work at home, your homemaking, your you know, the nurture, the, the cleaning, the cooking, the things that you're doing to tend to your home, right? He's instructed us to be kind, oh man, and to be submissive. Now, I'm not saying anybody needs to be a doormat, but scripture does tell us that husbands and wives are to submit to each other. But that'd be a conversation for a whole nother day, okay? Because everybody always acts like submission of being submissive is like a bad word when it's not if you take it in the right contents. But again, that'd be another class, not today. So he's also instructed us not to abuse the word of God. This is all in Titus chapter two, verses four through five. These are standards that are a part of being a Proverbs 31 woman, a part of being a homemaker, a part of, you know, being a woman of God. Amen that of which all of you are, okay? That of which traits that we all carry, amen? Whether you work inside the home or work outside the home, God has laid out his plan for you and I right there before us in his word as plain as day, y'all, as plain as day. So with all of that being said, I just wanted to end with this. Know that 
Your family is your first ministry, okay? Know that homemaking is a ministry, amen? Homemaking is not about doing it all. But instead, homemaking is about creating an environment where your family feels loved, they feel supported, they feel taken care of, they feel the presence of God, they can find their way to God, you know, within their homes, of course, in the church and everything else. But it's important to cultivate in the Holy Spirit within your home. Amen. It is about creating an atmosphere where Christ is at the center of it all that is done and said within your home. Amen. By taking care of your family, you are not only honoring them, but Lord Almighty, you are honoring God. And that right there, doing unto the Lord, is an amazing thing. That's exactly what the Lord wants to love him, to worship him, to obey him, and to honor him with our lives. So I would love, like I love to honor him with my life and how I honor him in taking care of my family. That's just how I would, I love doing things for him by showing him that I am grateful and that I am appreciative for the husband that he's given me, for the children he has given me. I'm thankful that, you know, I'm doing laundry because I got working hands to be able to provide this work to be able to take care of and tend to my family. Amen. I'm thankful that I get to cook for them. It's a daunting task at times, but man, I put love in all that I do. I do this because I love you, right? That's what I tell my kids when I take care of you. I do this. Why? Because I love you. Amen. And I'm doing this unto the Lord and to honor him. So with all that being said, excuse my light over here, just kept going out through the teaching, but hey, we still made it, amen, we still are here. I want to go ahead and end in prayer so that you can go on about your day. So today, Father God, Lord of Lords, we just thank you, God. We are just utterly joyful God, it's just the amazingness that you are. Father God, I thank you for this word, Lord God. I pray that those have heard this message, that they know that they are all homemakers, Lord God. I pray that each and every person that hears this message today, that they just walk away knowing that they are built for this, that you have created them to be exactly who they are, Father God, that they feel motivated to go about the, the ways of their home, to tend to their home, Father God. I just pray for your, your power and your motivation, Lord God, to just continue to um, consume them, Lord God, and cause them to do things to honor you. Father God, I praise you. We thank you for the families that you have given us. We thank you for the opportunity to take care of and tend to them. Lord God, I pray that we all keep a watchful eye on the enemy, Lord, because we know that he comes in to kill, steal, and destroy. And we just don't have time for that, Father God. So I just ask you, Father God, that can just protect each and every home, each and every heart, Father God, that is seeking you, Father God. We love you with all of our hearts, Lord God, and we praise your glorious name. We thank you for today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. The Lord is good. Thank you again for joining me. I greatly appreciate it. You know, we're just going to continue to go on to in this uh, P31 series week by week till we get to the end, and I'm just praying and hoping that we all grow and get something out of this because yeah, God's word is true and it's living. And yeah, with all that being said, I love you all. God bless you all. Whoo, I pray Father Lord that he has his will and his way over your day today and every day in Jesus name. Goodbye y'all.